Hello everyone and welcome to your Glassnow video report for week 49 2022. So what we're looking at today is what I'm calling a capital reset. We've essentially seen the flushing out of a huge amount of liquidity that flowed into the Bitcoin network since the all time high in November. Now, what we'll see is that a lot of that capital has actually flowed out. And the way that we can measure that is using the realized cap. And this is essentially looking at all the realized losses, people who bought coins at 50,000 and now selling them down at 18,000. That loss, that capital loss is essentially representing a capital outflow. And we have the tools using on-chain data to really measure this. So as I mentioned, we're really gonna be looking at realized losses and the realized cap in the first part of this presentation. Um, the realized cap is one of the most important metrics when it comes to on-chain analytics. It's really the foundation for a lot of our tools, the concept of realized profit and loss, measuring coins when they were required and when they were disposed of, and looking at the price differential between them. It tells us a lot about what the market's currently doing, the overall sentiment, capital inflows and outflows, and it's just a really, really powerful framework that you just simply don't have in traditional analysis. Now, we're also going to close out by looking at the on-chain activity side of the equation. We have seen a spike higher in some metrics, but not in terms of others. And what I want to really explore is that dichotomy. What does it mean when you have active addresses and an overall uptick in fees, but you do not have an uptick in volume? We're going to explore what that actually means and try and assess what it's telling us about the structure of the market. So as always, please do give us a rate, a share, and a subscribe, and let's jump straight into the analysis and get started. Okay, so starting off with our price action, and we are still in the process of digesting the recent FTX collapse move. Um, we have traded somewhere around 17,000. We've been a stable coin for a couple of days now, um, essentially consolidating in this sideways range. But really, after these very volatile down or up moves, but in this case down, it is typical for the market to move into a period of consolidation. High volatility generally precedes low volatility and vice versa. So at some point in time, the market will be ready to move. Um, we will see when that happens. So the first metric we're going to look at is the realized profit and loss. Now, what we're looking at here is essentially all of the coins that were moved on a particular day. Look at how much profit was realized. So these are coins that were purchased at 6,000 and sold at 17. And look at all the coins that were bought at 55,000 and were sold at 15. They're going to be the realized losses. Now, what you can see is these very, very steep and deep realized loss periods. This is essentially showing when we have a major flush out of sellers, um, typically at a loss. And what I really want to highlight, let's just have a look at the difference between the two. The reason why we look at both of these is actually going to come to the next metric, which is uh, one of my favorites and one I actually personally found um, uh, fairly recently and have been using for, uh, for a number of different studies. But what you can see here on this chart, the blue curve in here is the net um, profit and loss. So that's taking away from the profit, we consider them a positive. From the loss, we consider them a negative, and then we subtract them away and we end up with our net realized profit and loss. Now, what you can see is that up here in this first phase, remember we've talked about this was really the start of the bear in May 2021. You can see that the blue curve is not really close to the bottom of the red. We're seeing that it's offset by a large degree of profit. There was a lot of profit still being locked in from people who were essentially taking money out during the bull. Now, you can also see another period of profit realization as we rallied from um, July 2021 to the all-time high in November 2021. A very, very large regime of profit-taking. In fact, that whole period, 2021, was dominated by profit-taking, with the exception of this one sell-off event down here in May, June, and July 2021. Now, what you can see is that really 2022 has been a red regime. We have seen primarily um, coins that are being transferred at a loss. It is primarily a loss-making regime. Sorry, let me get my zoom back in check. Um, most of this is now red, and you can actually see there's almost no profits being locked in. Now, this is in part because we're essentially below the $20,000 previous all-time high. So we're actually back down in previous cycle territory. There's just not that many coins on the move that are in profit anymore. So it's partially a result of that. But you can also see these major capitulation events, which is giving us a dominance of losses. So now on to the P&L ratio. This is actually one of my, uh, my favorite recent metrics. I actually didn't know this exists until a couple of months ago, and I've been essentially using it ever since. So the realized profit and loss ratio um, is a tool that basically takes the ratio between realized profits and realized loss. Who would have thought? Now, what we're looking at here is you can see 
the high green regime. This is a profit regime which is dominated in bull markets. You can also see a loss making regime. This is basically saying when it's red on this metric, this has got a seven day moving average. Um, I'll show you some tricks in a second. But what we're looking at here is a bear market where losses are exceeding profits. Now, as the bear market continues, the losses get worse, the profits get smaller, and this thing continues to trend to a low level. We then start to get a recovery. Profits start to re-enter the system. You get some kind of upside price action and the market returns. Now, what you can see is that during the FTX collapse, we traded down to what is an all-time low, which means the smallest amount of profits relative to losses in all history. So it really shows just how dramatic this has been. You don't really see these major capitulation style events often. You can see we've had them back here in 2018. We had them here in 2015. And we had one all the way back here in 2011. So we really are among some very, very small probabilities for such an event to actually occur. And in this instance, the profits were 14 times smaller than the losses. Now, for metrics like this, which are looking for regime shifts, I've gone here to the settings button in the top right of this dashboard, and I'm going to change this to like a 30 day, something that's got a little bit more size to it. And now you can really see quite clearly the bear market into that reversal back to the upside. You can see the bear market into that reversal back to the upside. And you can see that this is actually tagging quite close to the 2018. This is when profits have re-entered the system. There's been enough coin redistribution. People are back in profit. The market's got demand flowing in to actually sustain it. So if we take that as context, where are we at the moment? Well, we are absolutely not reverting yet. So in this instance, it would tell us what we've been saying over many, many weeks now that duration is that final component that's missing. But you can also see that we are down at levels last seen at the 2018 low. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the low is going to be in, but it is telling us that we have very, very few observations through Bitcoin history that are as severe as this. And historically speaking, when we get a significant break on these longer term moving averages, it generally signifies a recovery or a return into a new market regime. So this is a great metric on a 30 day moving average. If you're just looking for that very, very big picture view to understand where the market cycle is, this is essentially what I've been using it for across different time frames to just try and understand, are there more profits or losses? And what does that tell us about market sentiment? So I mentioned at the start, we're going to look at the realized cap. Now, the realized cap is one of those extremely foundational models. What it does, it's like the, the on-chain realized, sorry, the on-chain market cap. It values every coin at the price when it last moved. So what we're essentially doing there is Satoshi's coins, which have a price of zero, they were moved at a price of zero, have a value of zero in the realized cap. And likewise, the coin that was moved yesterday has a price of 17,000. The coin that was moved at the all-time high has a price of 69,000. Now, this metric will climb. People think that when it's climbing, it's actually bullish. Well, what's going on here is coins that were bought at 3,000, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 are being revalued and sold to somebody else at 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 60,000. So when this model is rising, it means that people are taking profits. And as you would expect, when it's declining, it means that people are taking losses. And you can see, here's that little loss regime we saw, May through to July, but then we went through a second run. This is profit taking. People are selling coins from a cheaper cost basis to a higher cost basis, which what that actually means is that some guy has a price that he last bought it at, at 69,000, and if price falls below that, he could start to panic. So you can see that through most of 2022, particularly since Luna collapsed, we have seen a significant downflow. Now, these downflows in overall realized cap, we'll look at it across cycles in a second, they do not happen very often. So generally during a bear market, we get these long-term st stable plateaus in realized cap, but you can see we've flushed out about 17% since the all-time high. So what we've seen is 17% of the coins that were revalued higher or 17% of the network value has now been flushed out. Now, 17% may not seem like a very large amount, but if we look at 2014 to 15, we only saw 14% get flushed out. And during the 2017 to 2018 cycle, similarly, we had a 16.5% washout. And here's an actual view of all of those different market cycles. You can see that from the price all-time high, 
We flushed out 24% back in the old days in 2011. I don't give the old days as much weight. I think it's much more relevant. This is just a, a tip for analysts. It's much more relevant to compare to the 2018 cycle. And if you need to compare to the 2015 cycle, the 2011 cycle was just so very different to where we currently are. And even the 2015 cycle was very, very different. So really looking at the 2018 is probably the best frame of reference here. However, bearing in mind that we only have two sample sizes in that instance. So, you know, you have to take what you can get. But anyway, we are now within a very, very similar degree of drawdown on the realized cap that we've seen in previous cycles. Now, as I mentioned, this thing has not yet signaled any kind of reversal. We are still in a loss-making regime, but that realized P&L ratio will really help you identify when we start to revert back into a profit-dominated regime. So that's a good tool to just have in your radar, looking for that break back above the neutral level and seeing whether we get any kind of upside momentum, particularly across some of the larger timeframes. That means that profits are coming back into the system, losses are declining, which means sellers are exhausted, and you obviously have demand coming in to absorb those flows. So those three things will give you a positive P&L ratio, and it should start to mean, the re in fact, it will mean that the realized cap starts to climb because you have more profits than losses, thus realized cap starts to bottom out and reverse back to the upside. So the last topic I want to touch on is the on-chain activity. Now, the reason why is that typically speaking, when you get these major flush out events, what it triggers is there's a whole lot of things. Some people go, that's it, get me out of this asset. I've had enough of Bitcoin, I'm selling all of it. So that's part of the activity. You also have someone else who goes, I can't believe that this price is currently here and they're going to step in as a buyer. Because remember, every market has two sides. But generally speaking, when all sellers are exhausted, you start to get into that value zone where interest slowly grinds higher. So on-chain activity is typically one of the first metrics to reverse back to the upside. However, with the caveat that it comes with lots and lots of false signals. So that's why we use these particular models. What these are trying to filter out is taking out that daily noise and really trying to look at it from a, is this a sustained momentum approach? Do we actually have an influx of new usage or is it just a capitulation event and it's a short-term burst? So that's what these models are trying to pick up. So the first one we're going to look at is the minor revenue. Now this is converted into a Z score um, on a four-year basis. What this basically means is if it's blue, it means that statistically speaking, we have lower fees than we have over, on average over the last four years. So it's bearish. It means that there's not many people moving uh, coins around. There's not many in demand for transaction. And essentially the mempool is relatively empty. So demand is relatively low. Now, once it gets into the red zone, as you can see, it's showing that we're above average. There's a lot more fees, a lot more congestion, a lot more people transacting. It's typically a good sign. Now, where are we, are we in the current cycle? Well, we've been in this loss-making regime or this low activity regime really since June of last, of, uh, last year. Um, and as you can see, we've started to revert not into the red zone yet, but back towards the neutral level. Now, this is not necessarily a good thing, but it's also not a bad thing. It means we're back to the mean. We're now at the average level of fees paid over the last four years. So what this is really trying to tell us is that we're kind of getting back to neutral, which means it's not nasty, um, but we also haven't reverted back to any kind of significant strength. There's a little bit of mempool, mempool congestion, but not really anything to write home about. So it's kind of that first indicator, start paying attention and just having a look at things in a bit more detail. Now, similarly, we're going to look at the new address momentum metric. Now, this one here is looking at the yearly moving average in blue and the monthly moving average in red. What we're really looking for is the monthly to be above the yearly, which is basically saying that take a yearly average, are we outperforming that? Are there more people transacting, more new addresses coming in on chain over the course of the last month than we've seen over the last year? Now, what you can see is that we have had a burst higher, right? We have got some kind of upside momentum but it's not really the most amazing thing we've ever seen. What I also want to just highlight is how good this metric can really capture that big picture market structure. And you may start seeing that there's confluence between these tools. You can see in the 2017 and in our 2021 market cycle, how the overall monthly activity absolutely collapsed. We reached this massive pit. This is really the deepest phase of the bear in terms of on-chain activity. It bottoms first, and then it started to pick up over time. It's a long, slow grind back to recovery. You can see here again, 
we had this enormous dip and we've since been on the long, slow, grinding recovery, bearing in mind that both of these recoveries, 2019 was another one year bear and we've had a one year bear from the top, right? So we are currently in the process of recovering in terms of activity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that price responds. You can see how these two things aren't necessarily linked, but it helps you show where the market cycle is on a macro scale. Here's the major capitulation starting of the bear. Here's the slow grind higher and a good break back above the yearly is typically a good sign. But as you can see, false signals do happen. So that's why we're looking for this thing to stick above here for some time. Now that's all well and good from transaction counts, which creates mempool congestion and fees. It's good from new addresses, but what if those new addresses and those transactions are only moving around 0.001 BTC? Well, what we're looking at, that's, that's the economic payload. How much volume are they moving? There may be lots of transactors, but if they're moving around cents, who cares? They're just filling up space for not much reason. By the way, there's been a lot of um, uh, exchange wallet management lately, which is a big reason why those fees have pushed higher. So you can see that you need to look at a couple of different tools to really assess this. And for those who are curious, all of these tools are going to be contained, these on-chain activity ones, in the on-chain activity dashboard, specifically for this purpose, giving you all of the tools to assess what's going on at any point in time. So one metric, I probably don't even need to describe this one too closely. This is our total transfer volume on a change adjusted basis. You can see this level down here is not the most appealing. In fact, this downtrend is pretty nasty. So whilst we may have an uptick in um, new addresses, we may have a slight uptick in overall fee pressure. What we do not have is a lot of transaction activity in terms of volume. There's not much volume moving around the system which you would generally say is not a great sign. So what we can then look at is the breakdown by size. And what this is looking at is coins up to $100,000 worth, right? So what we're doing is we're removing the $100,000 plus. They're kind of the institutions, the large entities. We're taking out all of those large investors and we're just looking at what you could arguably say is retail, right? We're looking at people who have relatively small balances in the Bitcoin space. Now, what you can see is that we saw a massive decline in this, let's just call it retail for simplicity, in this retail dominance during the early or the late parts of 2020 into the 2021 bull. That stabilized at around 12% for most of 2021. And in from roughly mid-2022, we've started to see an expansion back to the upside. And in fact, from about 12%, we're up at about 36%. So about a 3x in terms of overall growth in the dominance of retail. What this really means is that what, even though we have lots of users moving coins around, what we do have is a declining volume and that means that we have an uptick in retail participation. So what we are seeing is that institutions are the most affected. They have seen some serious damage as it came through this whole FTX debacle. We will have to wait and see how this plays out, but this is kind of the first sign that we can see of a bit of a changing market structure. And it may well mean that what we're looking at is some loss of interest coming from the institutional side. We've looked at in recent videos how those whale net position changes were a little bit lackluster. This is yet another piece of evidence really pointing to mm, it may not be so good on the big investor side. So thanks as always for tuning in for that session, folks. Hopefully you found that useful. Be sure to check out the Realize Cap if you haven't seen this before. It really is one of the most powerful metrics, um, and there's a lot that comes out of that concept of realized profit and loss. It's great for trying to understand market cycles and just whether we're in a profit or a loss regime, as is that PL ratio. Um, you'll find that all in, a, in the advanced subscription, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.